Hey, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. We're now back on our regularly scheduled plan through the Gospel of Matthew. I hope that you had a blessed and incredible and amazing uh, New Year's Eve. And then I I hope that I got to see you yesterday at church for New Year's Day. And now as we gear up for Christmas break to come to a close and inevitably give way to the pesky return of school and work, Let's get back on track in our, in our progress through the Gospel of Matthew in our overall journey. We've now officially covered every blessed and Holy Spirit inspired word of it from the end of the study in Ruth, the beginning of the study of Matthew, and now recapping and picking up chapter two in our Christmas week. Now, where we left off was Matthew chapter 20, okay? Our sermon looked at verses one through 16. Our uh, devotion, the, the week before, Christmas picked up what uh, remained after that. Our curriculum covers Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 through 28. And now today, we're going to pick up on the verse immediately following the curriculum. Here's Matthew chapter 20, verse 29. As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. There were two blind men sitting by the road. When they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. The crowd demanded that they keep quiet, but they cried out all the more, Lord, have mercy on us, son of David. Jesus stopped and called them and said, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, they said to him, Open our eyes. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes. Immediately, they could see, and they followed him. (laughs) This is not the first time in the Gospel of Matthew we've seen Jesus referred to as the son of David. This is not the first time in the Gospel of Matthew we've seen Jesus heal the blind. And so in a perfectly consistent, um, in a perfectly consistent response, Jesus brings about healing. And the result is a story that bears remarkable similarity to salvation how we are touched by Jesus. We were blind before, but now because of Jesus, we can see. So as they're leaving Jericho, a large crowd follows him. There are two two blind men sitting by the road and what they cry out to Jesus is Lord. Okay, that's a great start. He is Lord. Have mercy on us. We know that every salvation is an act of mercy from God. Son of David means that they believe he is the embodiment, the fulfillment of what was prophesied all the way back in First and Second Samuel about this son of David whose throne would never end. And then there's something added in this particular miraculous account that wasn't here before. It wasn't in other accounts. Uh, it, wasn't, it didn't occur earlier in the text. The crowd demanded that they keep quiet. That right there. That is what I want you on your first devotion of the new year to take home with you because I believe that there are some people who have been succumbing to the demands of the crowd that they keep quiet, but you're not going to keep quiet anymore. The crowd demanded that they keep quiet. Stop calling him Lord. Stop referring to him as the prophesied son of David, the Messiah. Stop asking him for mercy. Keep quiet. We don't want to hear anything more from you shut up. But their response is to cry out all the more. It is a new year and it's time for some Christians in Seattle to come busting out of the closet. Forget what the crowd tries to do to silence you. He's Lord. He's the son of David. He's had mercy on you. So you call out to him even if the crowd tells you to shush. Regardless of what kind of political threats they make or sort of social pressure it may put on you or how how it may affect the weirdness dynamic at work, would you come out as a Christian? Would you call upon Jesus and would you invite others to do the same? Okay, come on now. We've been at work on this for a while here. This is not news to you, okay? This is the very first series that we did. Right after that, we did Acts. We also went through apologetics and evangelism, and all of this was to show you how to share your faith. And in our apologetic series, we saw what God could do. And we recently recapped this, that if every Christian would evangelize someone who then evangelizes and then repeat that process, over the course of three years, there would be more Christians than there are people in Seattle. You know this. This is not new, okay? Look. 
wake up. You've already joined Planet Fitness for $10 a month. That's great, good job. Third year we've done that, I don't know. Maybe we'll make it through February this time, but this is what matters more. Share the gospel, cry out to Jesus. He's the Lord, he's the son of David. He's had mercy on you. So no matter what, if the crowd tries to silence you, you, like these two formerly blind men, cry out all the more. Jesus asks the seemingly obtuse question, what do you want me to do for you? It's so that they would answer, Lord, they said to him, open our eyes. Pray this for your city right now. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes, making contact with them exactly where they need him the most. Immediately, they could see, and they followed him. God, have mercy and compassion on our lost city. Open our eyes that we may see. You are the Lord. You are the prophesied son of David. You are the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy. Have mercy on us, Jesus, son of David. Open our eyes that we could see. In Jesus' name, amen.